All right, today we're in Watts 3020 DOM 2. So we're continuing our study of the DOM using JavaScript in the browser to manipulate the DOM. Um, and one of the important things that I hope you're starting to realize is this mapping of data to the DOM. So I call this data-driven DOM. Um, and the idea is, is that you get a list of data and that translates into a semantic list in the DOM. And so um, data, the fact that we can process data is really great, but what really changed things for JavaScript was the XML HTTP request, which was functionality that, that, that Microsoft had kind of worked on in a different way. And by the way, that stands for um, XML. It was sometimes goes by the name H XHR. And the idea was that you could make a request from programmatically inside of your browser and it would go out onto the internet and find that data and bring it back in an XML format. Um, well, since then we've actually started using a JSON format, the JavaScript object notation, and that's what you're going to be seeing for the most part. But this XML HTTP request was a great invention because it it allowed us to start looking at reaching out and uh, talking to other websites or even our own website, but being able to talk to it in terms of data and not just HTML. So JSON looks a lot like the, the, the JavaScript object, except for um, it does have a requirement that the key is always in quotes. Um, it looks like there's a little typo there. It should be credits with the quote after that. Um, but um, so what and, and then of course it can take on the values can be strings numbers boolean and so we can actually get that data back um, and one of the things that's evolved so in initially yeah we, we would just we had sort of the, the actual XHR requests that we originally sent out and you can find examples on the web it was a little bit clunky a lot of code and since then we've um, uh, you know, and it, it involved a call, you know, and then a, a handler, an event handler, so that an event would be fired when the data came back, and there would be um, a function to handle it. But then if you wanted to use that data to make possibly another call, you would end up with a lot of nested calls. We called them callbacks, and we called that state of lots of nested callbacks, callback hell, and it became hard to manage that code. So uh, the idea of promises came about, and these are objects that um, can uh, return, they can deal with uh, returning results if the request is successful and errors if it's not. So that takes one level out. And it can also be changed. So when we get the promise back, um, instead of getting back a callback, we get a promise. We can deal with it using some syntax, a dot then function, that takes a function um, and gets the response, kind of like how we got the event when we handled an event handler with with um, promises. We get back if this if it was successful, we'll get back data. Here I'm calling it response. If it failed, we'll get back an error. And we can handle these. We can code these um, with a then and a catch. So I've got two different chunks of code here. This is using a fetch command that's vanilla JavaScript. And this is using a $.get command. And there are actually some other libraries for, for doing this on the web. And um, in, in other courses, you'll study um, the Axios library, which, which provides some security and um, you know is, it also works with promises. But um, uh, that is for another class. For this class, we're looking at the fetch command. So sometimes it, it takes a little looking at this to see the pattern, but we, you call fetch, you pass it a URL, which um, we'll see that we call these an API, Application Programming Interface, um, that is a place where we can go and we can actually get data, and it will be returned to us, usually in, in a JSON format. And if it's successful, we'll process it, we'll process it through uh, the then, and we'll, we'll get the data back through this response variable, and we can do some processing. If it fails, we'll get an error. And, and this other pattern, it's also a promise. It, this is kind of a more standard promise that you'll see for other other types of activities. But the jQuery has a dollar get 
that you pass the API and you get back you, you uh, the success would be done and fail would, would give you an error and there are actually some other states that you can get so you can um, look into the that in the jQuery documents but the idea is very similar that you're going to call for the data and you're either going to be successful and then or you're going to have a failure um, and then the APIs, this is just a little note on how they work, uh, what they are, application programming interfaces. So we have this URI, which uh, really looks like a URL uniform resource indicator. And it is just a place where some resources exist, kind of like a URL, only URLs are usually associated with HTML. And here you can see a, a giant chunk of data returned as results. So it's a it's got nesting. Um, it's an object that contains a key results and then the value is an array and in the array we have gender and we have name and location. So these can be co complicated objects that are returned from our um, API calls. Um, so this data here is uh, actually coming from the random user generator so this is this is an API that just returns uh, fake people essentially names addresses you know all sorts of information this is not a real person but it's good for testing and for kind of playing around with data and then we'll also be looking at the Star Wars API which returns uh, data about Star Wars so you get uh, characters and, and information about them. So what we're going to be doing, and here's some resources that you can go read about Fetch and Dollar Get and JSON and Promises, is we're going to um, do have three directories with tutorials that walk us through using Fetch and the jQuery Get and, and even one that does a local Fetch. So if you have data in your actually in your web site project, um, you can fetch that. So if you happen to have a JSON file sitting in your, in your website, you can pull that into one of your web pages. And so we'll look at that and then we'll do, uh, we'll do one kind of a do-it-yourself, this data-driven doc number four. So if you look at this, we have four projects. These three are strictly tutorial, and then four you're going to do your own doc, but it, you'll be able to use what you learned here to do it. All right, so, um, and then there's some pictures showing what to expect for these different displays. Um, and there's some stretch goals, and you'll be turning in the two URLs, one the code, one the rendered code. And here's some attributes so you can go look up the random user API in Star Wars. All right, so let's get started. We're going to first start by forking this to our user account. Um, once it's forked, we can uh, go ahead and clone it. All right, and we will use code to To open it up and now we are ready to go. So let's take a look at the local fetch. So in this case you can see we have a file called data.json. So JSON files have a .json extension. You can see that we're listing three people and we have first name, last name, title, and email for each person. So if we wanted to create a list on our web page we can start with this data and um, we can actually make that happen. So on our web page, we have an unordered list for the person list, and then we have um, an unordered list for the person API list. Uh, let's see. I think for this, and then in our JavaScript, um, we are going to be fetching. We're going to fetch just to pick up the local list. So I don't think we actually need the person API list. We're just going to do our person list here. So, 
All right, so let's look at some of the instructions here. We will start with person fetch local. So we've got that data identified. And then in order to declutter the code, we're going to write a function that accepts title, first name, last name, email, and creates a list element. So we don't want to be like having a big chunk of code in, in, in one of these data handlers, these promises. So we've got this function create person el. It takes a title, first name, last name, and email. It creates a list item, and then it sets the inner HTML equal to all of that data, and it returns that element. So let's start with that, and that will go in our main. Okay, and I'll just comment. I'll just leave the comment. And then we are going to add a URL to fetch the command to pick up the local JSON file. And in this case, um, it's, going to be, it's going to be local, so we should be able to just uh, say dot slash data dot JSON. So it's just starting in this directory, stay in this directory, and pick up data dot JSON. Or actually, no, we're in the main.js, so we need to go up one directory. So we're setting up a relative link from main.js up to the root and then to the data.json. Um, that should take care of that. And then the way that fetch works is it returns a response, but we need to turn that. It's funny because we're getting the response as a JSON file but we still need to actually turn that into a JSON structure. And so we, what we do in that first then there is we, we return response.json. So we call a function.json on that, that that actually creates JSON. So we have then is a chained uh, function. It returns a promise. So we get the first promise, which contains our response. And then we we return the, the JSON uh, format of it. And that gets captured in the second then, and I'm going to call it my JSON. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and that my JSON um, contains the data that we want to get onto our page. So first of all, I get a person list, and then what I'm going to do is iterate through that my JSON data and create list elements for each one of them. So if you look at the snippet for that, we have a for of, because we're going to be, um, our result is going to give us an array. Actually, our result, if we look at this uh, JSON, we, it, our result is a count and persons. So our persons is the array. So we're going to have to specify that for our for the data that we're going to iterate through. And this snippet shows that. So if I bring that over here, let's take a closer look at that. Um, what's happening here is I have my JSON. So that's the JSON of JSONified response. And I'm taking the person's key and that's an array, and then I'm going to iterate through that array one person at a time. And then I will append to the person list, I'll append a child, and that child will be a list item created by the create person EL. So I'll pass in first name, last name, and email. So by passing those pieces of data into this create person, it will create a list item with that data in it, and then I append that to my unordered list. So let's take a look at how that runs. Uh, let's see, open with live server. Uh, it looks like maybe there was a, a problem there. Uh, let's see, so it's kind of good to have problems because they can kind of teach you something. So failed to load 404, so it did not find my data.json. So let's go take a look at that. All right, so we have a problem with finding.json, and that kind of reminds me of something that I 
that I did wrong here. So in this fetch, um, it's not that I'm fetching it relative. I really am fetching, I'm fetching from this website. So um, it's a URI, so it is actually looking starting in the root of this website that I am currently running under. So if I fix that, Yes, now I'm pulling my data in and I'm getting those persons in. So that was my mistake, but um, it's not that you're looking for data relative to where you're calling it from. You're actually, it's like it, the API is, is going to be um, relative to the root of the website. So in this case, the data is in the, is in the root of the website, and so there's no need to filter down. If I had created like a folder data and put data slash data.json, then I would have to look down from the root, but it's all based on the root, not on where the not on where the JavaScript that's calling it is. So anyway, that takes care of um, loading some local data that I have just created and and just hard coded here. Um, sometimes that's all you need though, is you're just maintaining some kind of a set of data that you want to be able to draw on in your in your uh, web page. All right, well, let's save that. Uh, so let's add so this takes care. Now, the thing that you will notice is that all of our data processing, all of our fetching, it's going to kind of follow the same pattern, whether it's local or, or out on the internet. It's just, it's going to be different URLs or URIs that we're going after. All right, let's go on to uh, part two here. Fetch data from the internet. And um, this is going to look very similar. We've got a person list and a person API, but I think in this case, We'll be using an API, so we can probably take that out. And let's take a look at the instructions here. So in this case, we are fetching from the internet. So our fetch is going to be to this random user in the API. And all APIs have their own peculiar, their own special way of specifying how to get data. And you have to read their docs to figure it out. But in the case of random user me, you can um, add a query string. So query strings are just key value pairs that follow a question mark in the URL. So, um, and if you have multiple query strings, they would be separated by an ampersand, and that's just straight um, HTTP protocol. But so what we're going to do is we're going to grab three people from this random user dot me API. Let's see what we have in here. So we're, we, we're just we're hanging on to that function that we used in the last local section. But now we're going to be calling, instead of a local file, we're going to be calling this uh, internet. Um, and I, you should be able to probably just grab that and run that. And you'll see it returns JSON. So that's what we're that's what we're going to be getting back in our code, and once again we get back a response. We have to format it to, to JSON, and then we um, we have a, a my JSON, and we iterate through the results on that because I basically borrowed the same format there that um, for my my local JSON file that that the random me uses, uses. So you have a results, and then you have um, uh, an array of objects, one for each person. So once again, I can grab the person API list. I can step through it and append a child where I'm creating a person from title, first name, last name. And I encourage you to look at the data and add more data to this output. So the, this is just you know, just to kind of get you to see how this fetch command works and how you can turn data coming in into uh, DOM content. So let's try and run that. Um, this is number two. 
the pink flag server and there it is and it looks very similar to the last except notice they don't capitalize the titles the first names and last names so that's actually a stretch goal you could write some functions that would uh, capitalize the first letter of titles and names and make that look um, like we had in the in the local so that looks good so we're going to add that fetch internet all right so that takes care of number two um, and then number three, we're going to get into using jQuery. Okay, so for for the jQuery, and we have already studied a little bit of jQuery and, and know about using the, the dollar sign to do select. So um, let's um, take a look at these instructions, see how to proceed with this. In this case, we will use the dollar $get and we'll hand off the same URI, which again, URI looks just like a URL. So let's say we do the dollar $get and then we're just going to call the done function. We're not going to do the, the error, um, the catch, um, the fail function, but I suggest you can go ahead and write that um, if you want to try that out. So what we've got here is a call to get and then done and it's going to receive a response. Now with jQuery, we don't have to do that extra step of turning it into JSON. It will just be JSON. Um, and then we, but we will need to grab our person list, which will be the zeroth item on this class. And then we'll iterate through each person in the results of that and append that to our list. And so that actually should come out looking pretty much like the last call. Yes. Now notice the names change. So, and that's just because we're getting random names. So it's, don't worry if your names don't match the names that I've posted for the examples, because these will change. If I refresh this, you can see that cha names change because we're just dealing with random people and if you're interested go ahead and look deeper into the data print some of it out you can expand this create person to show more data um, this is just the beginning of understanding how to fetch data from the internet and get it on the web page but since it's such an important part of why javascript is is an important language now i want it to be i want you to start having a look at it Okay, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and check that in. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, git add. All right, so we've got those done. All right, and now we're at for data-driven doc, and this is a do-it-yourself. So let's just take a look at the notes on what you want to do there. You will um, create a data-driven document, and you'll end up with a list of 10 characters from Star Wars because you use the Star Wars API. And here's a picture of what you get back for, um, for Star Wars. So you can see in this case, it brought back 87. It, well, it tells me that I've got 87 but really it brings it back in pages and each page has 10. So if I don't specify a page, it will give me the first 10 characters. And there is some extra data here in the object, but we'll be going into the results to get to an array that contains the names of 10 of the characters at a time. And so we should get something that looks like this. It's people from Star Wars or really characters from Star Wars. Um, and so what we need to do is we've got to, we're basically starting with a git keep and we need to get our index HTML, CSS, and JS in there. And then um, 
it, we've got a hint that the two data fetch internet can serve as a good pattern. And so really the only thing that might be changing is the URL, the URI, you know, where we get this data. And then uh, what we're going to be appending. So we're, we're just going to just required to get the name, although you can add some more data. I mean, you can you can actually, whatever you feel that you have time to work on and want to try out, you can pull in any of this data, but at a minimum, the name. So let's take a look at how that's going to work. Um, let's start with this hint, and I'm going to just grab the files from two and bring those in. So we'll just grab those files and I'm grabbing this Watts PNG which is just being used as a favicon and just grab all those files. And now uh, we should be running <clears throat> whatever we had with two. So this is using the random people. Um, let's close out some of this stuff here. Close the other tabs to the right. Yeah. All right. Um, but what we really want to use is that Star Wars API. So we can see that this is the UR, URI for that. So if we go into main, we're going to fetch. We're using the, the vanilla fetch. Um, we're going to get back a response. Uh, then we have to do the response.json because this is fetch and then we get our JSON um, and then we want to attach that to a list so we have the person API list in there so we get a reference to that list and then when we look at that data we will be getting back this whole object to get to the person array we need to click we need to drill into the results so my json dot results will do <clears throat> um, a for of on that and we can create a person el but in this case um, we really just are going to grab the name that's all we that's our minimum we'll start with the minimum we're just going to grab the name. There's an object. It's pretty flat compared to the random user. And so in creating our element, we really just have a name. So I'm kind of trying to reuse code because it's sort of tested and it works. But it's, our data has changed. So now I'm just dealing with a name, so I'm just going to create, add the inner HTML will just be the name. I'm just handing off a name there. So let's take a look at that. And we'll run this. And, oh, there it is. It takes, there was a delay there. That's the time to fetch the data. I want to show you just quickly, we'll get more into this with some other code later in the course, that you can debug the browser. So if you go to sources in the inspector main, I can actually put breakpoints just like I did with uh, the node debugger and do it right in the browser. So when I run this code, you can see it returns this um, response. It's a big object. It's got lots of things in it. And if I click on body, it shows me this. So it's got a lot of different... Um, pieces to it. Uh, and let's just let that turn into JSON. And now with, that it's JSON, I can actually see this results array. So I can see all of the people that came back with this. So this is kind of neat and this is a really good tool, really good to spend some time uh, developing your skills with it. You can see that it uses the same kind of run to next breakpoint. It uses step over, step into, step out of and you have your toggle here for the breakpoints. So that, if you do have a bug, you can use that to help you figure out what's going on. All right, so that is the do-it-yourself and 
I'm going to check this in now to status git add git commit. All right, so now that we have that all checked in, let's go take a look at setting up the rendering for this. So let's see, we're up here, and we're gonna wanna go out to settings. So we've got all our code set up, and now we go into GH pages, pick the master branch, uh, check the enforce if necessary, refresh, taking a little bit of time to render, to post it, so there it is, it's green background, open that up, and I've got links here, so I have an index.html in the root that has links, and so if I go to, to the data fetch, the internet, and the jQuery, and you know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add my data doc to that. So I'm gonna go back into this project and let's close these out. And here's the index H, nope, that's not it, let's see. Here's the root index HTML. Let's add another one of these. Make it easy to get to. So this is our data-driven doc, or do it yourself, and data-driven doc. So I'll check that in. Okay, that'll probably take a couple of seconds to get pushed out to GitHub.io. And there it is, data driven doc. So there's our Star Wars API. So I think that if you can study these and go ahead and make, make another one, you know, um, we'll be studying APIs a lot more when we study frameworks. But I think it's a good introduction to seeing it running in, in vanilla uh, JavaScript and jQuery. So uh, that's it.